Well, hello, wonderful students of Serrano High School. It's your favorite choir teacher again, Mr. Dolan, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to open the vocal tract. Now, before we dive into what the vocal tract is, I want to tell you our purpose, and the purpose is simply to manipulate and control aspects of pitches, vocal colors, and vowels. So in other words, how high and how low we can sing, the different colors, meaning the different kind of tone quality, and of course the vowel is of a, 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 e, o, u, and anything else in between. Now, before we move forward, I want to define a couple key vocabulary words. Our first word is larynx, and that is simply a fancy word for voice box. And we can feel for our larynx by just feeling for our Adam's apple. Yes, ladies, you too can feel for this muscle. The next word is soft palate. And the soft palate, in my mind, is a soft tissue located on the top of your mouth towards the middle back part of your mouth. So in other words, if this is the roof of your mouth, this is your front teeth right here, roof of your mouth, just take your tongue, trace it from your front teeth, up your mouth, go a little bit more back, and you'll eventually feel soft tissue or soft flesh. And that is our soft palate. Now the last word that I want to define is what a vocal tract is. Now, the vocal tract is the airway that extends from the tip of our nose to the bottom of our larynx. And yes, all of that is involved in singing. Now, both scientists and vocal scholars think of our vocal tract as a singing tube. And our main goal is just to keep it open. And we keep it open by releasing the lower jaw, the tongue, the pillars and the soft palate, the tissue in the back of the throat, and of course the position of our larynx. The first point I want to talk about is the jaw. Now, we talked extensively about the jaw in the last video, so I'm simply just going to remind you what we had said. We want our jaw to be dropped in a backwards, downwards motion as opposed to jutting out. And some of the tips to help is to massage the chew bones right here, or even to make the duh sound um, that oftentimes we make as a kid to I guess, make fun of one another. The next part of the vocal tract that I want to talk about are the lips. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that they should be rounded for vowels like U, O, and O. That was an open O over there. And they should be released for vowels like E, 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 and A. Additionally, the lips are in charge of many consonant sounds. It's worthwhile noticing that the upper lip remains stable while the lower lip remains mobile, oftentimes um, assisting in making those noises. The last thing that I want to say is it is our job to keep our lips tension free and most importantly, visually appealing, meaning that we don't want to grimace or make a funny kind of like motion with our lips. So that way the audience is not distracted. The next part of the vocal tract that I would like to talk about is the tongue. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that the tongue is intertwined with many other muscles in the vocal tract. And what that means is if there is tongue tension, chances are there is tension in many other places. Now, the tongue should touch the base of your teeth. So in other words, if this is the bottom teeth and this is your tongue, the tip of the tongue should be the right place on the bottom teeth. And that should occur about 70% of the time that we are singing. The other 30% is what we are assisting with consonants, but we got to return to that position ASAP for the vowels. Additionally, we want to position the tongue in the shape of the vowel we are going to sing. So in other words, we talked about the OO having the tongue kind of like as a back vowel for our OO. And then our E, the tongue, is in a forward vowel. We'll talk about that later on in some other videos. Some other tips to help while we are exercising the tongue is to do a light siren on a hmm. In other words, hmm. And feel for yourself. Are you moving the tongue? Is the tongue tightening? Or is it staying in tonus exactly where it needs to be? The next exercise is to stick your tongue out as far as it can go then re rapidly return it back. The next part of the vocal tract that I would like to talk about are the pillars and the soft palate. Now, it is our goal to free these areas of tension. And in my mind, the best way to do so is to simply inhale warm air. It's a, worthwhile to note that it's warm air because cool air may cause vocal harm or harm to the vocal fo folds. And simply to look in a mirror or even look like in a camera to monitor that soft palate. The next part of the vocal tract that I want to talk about is the back wall of the throat. And when we're thinking about the back wall of the throat, that is even behind the uvula. Those are the muscles that constrict when we, um, when we swallow when we're eating. 
and so many of the other things that mentioned previously in this video are involved in releasing tension to the back wall. So as long as your tongue, your lips, your jaw is released, as long as you're inhaling that warm air, the back wall of your throat should be released. The last part of the vocal tract that I want to talk about is the larynx. Now, as mentioned before, the larynx is that voice box. We can oftentimes feel it connected to our Adam's apple. And it's worthwhile noticing that our larynx should be stable, yet we should avoid rigidity or we should avoid it being rigid. It should be moderately low. We shouldn't force it to be low, but it definitely should not be high when we are singing. Some tips to help out with the larynx is that, well, first, just stretch out your muscles. Often do a lot of those neck exercises that we covered in our last video. Otherwise, you can take two fingers, monitor the position of your larynx when you sing. Monitor, monitor the position of your larynx when you swallow. When you swallow, I bet you can feel your larynx just kind of jut up. Now, when we're singing, we're aiming for a quote-unquote unswallow sensation. Some practical tips for myself that I like to do is to monitor my larynx and then just start phonating on a hum. And then I ask myself, is my larynx hiking up or is it staying relatively in place? Even more, if you want to take it to the next level, start doing just a light vocal siren. Same question applies. Is your larynx moving, moving around crazily or is it staying relatively where it should be? Some other exercises that might help you out. One, inhale both through your mouth and your nose at the same time to feel the sensation of air traveling through the soft palate as well as the nasal cavity, like follows. Another exercise that you might do is inhale, inhale a wholesome breath through different vowel shapes. So can you do it through the ah? Can you do it through the eh? Can you do it through the e? And so on and so forth. Some things to avoid when opening up the vocal tract is one, yawning too wide. Oftentimes I've heard it explained that it's a yawning sensation. The reason why I avoid saying that is because oftentimes when we strive for a yawn, we overcompensate and open it too much, which actually causes tension. The next thing that's worthwhile to avoid is cool air. In other words, inhaling that cool air. We want to inhale warm air and exhale warm air. And you can kind of feel the warm air versus which was cool air, which could shock the vocal cords. Additionally, when we exhale while we're singing, think of it like you're in a cold place and you're warming up your hands. So in summation, we want a released jaw, and we want it to be flexible and free of tension, raised soft palate, but no tension in those pillars, a, a flexible yet independent tongue, an open throat with a deep feeling of inhalation. Lastly, the lyrics low and stable, but not pressed down. Thanks everyone.